Top 5 Places to Visit in Japan Welcome to my channel. So before we get started with our video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you are new here subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you never miss any update. Many first-time visitors to Japan are often surprised to learn that, as one of the world's most advanced industrialized nations. This relatively small Asian country also boasts a rich and fascinating history that dates back thousands of years. Indeed, long before many of Europe's most spectacular cathedrals were built, Japan's Shinto and Buddhist temples were already well-established and drawing pilgrims and patrons for their often elaborate designs and decor. At the same time, the country was already perfecting the skills and trades that would set it on the path to riches, from fine porcelains and ceramics to textiles such as silk. Much of this rich tradition has, despite wars and natural devastation, been preserved, or rebuilt, and a visit to Japan is a memorable adventure. Boasting an endless list of top attractions, fun things to do, and points of interest to explore, a vacation in Japan is certainly a great investment of time and money. Discover the best places to visit in the country with our top 5 list of the top tourist attractions in Japan. Number 5. The Island Shrine of Itsukushima. Just a short ferry ride from mainland Hiroshima is the island of Miyajima, famous the world over as Japan's Shrine Island. Covering an area of 30 square kilometers in Hiroshima Bay, Miyajima is best known as the home of the Itsukushima Shrine, a Shinto temple dedicated to the princess daughters of the wind god Susano. Dating from the 8th century, the majority of the shrine's buildings rise out of the waters of a small bay supported only by piles. The effect at high tide is simply stunning, making these structures including the famous Great Floating Gate, Otori, appear as if they're floating on water. Linked together by walkways and bridges, it's a fascinating place to explore, in particular its larger halls. Another notable feature is the shrine stage, where visitors are entertained with traditional dances and musical performances. Also worth exploring are the island's exquisite grounds and gardens, home to wild deer and numerous bird colonies. Number 4. Historic Kyoto. One of Japan's most visited cities, lovely Kyoto one of the few cities in the country to be spared the devastation of World War II attracts more than 10 million visitors annually. Most of them are here to explore Kyoto's fine old streets and architecture, much of it unchanged since the imperial family took up residence here more than 1,000 years ago. Even then, the city was Japan's most important cultural center. This legacy, in fact, continues to this day with its many museums and art galleries, each bursting with important sculptures, paintings, and other art forms. Highlights of Kyoto's Buddhist-influenced architecture include its many well-preserved temples, 30 of which are still in use, and important structures such as the 14th-century Golden Pavilion. Be sure to also visit Nijo Castle, a 17th-century fortress that has retained its original walls, towers, and moat. Also worth seeing are the castle's beautiful gates, along with its palace with fine interior decor. Number 3. Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park While little needs to be said here of the horrors of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima in August 1945, much can be said of the incredible efforts this vibrant city has made to commemorate the many victims of the world's first nuclear attack. Perhaps even more importantly, Hiroshima has become a symbol of lasting peace. Visited by more than a million people each year, many from overseas, Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park lies at the epicenter of the atomic blast in what was once a bustling part of the city. Here you'll find a number of important monuments, memorials, and museums relating to the events of that fateful day. In addition to the grounds and gardens with their colorful cherry blossoms, the park is where you'll find the Peace Memorial Museum, with its numerous exhibits dealing with the issue of world peace. It's also where you'll find the Memorial Cenotaph and the Flame of Peace, as well as the Atom Bomb Dome, the ruins of an administrative building that lay at the center of the explosion. Number 2. Imperial Tokyo. Tokyo's most famous landmark, the Imperial Palace with its beautiful 17th-century park surrounded by walls and moats, is a must-see when visiting the nation's capital. Don't be put off by the fact that the majority of the palace is closed to the public, as there is still enough to see simply by strolling the grounds. In addition to the many fine views of the palace from numerous points in the surrounding parkland, visitors are permitted into the East Higashi Jun Garden and other areas that are open to the public as part of an organized tour. 
One of the most romantic views is of the famous Nayubashi Bridge, or Double Bridge, so named for its watery reflection. Another one of the must-sees for tourists visiting Tokyo is the famous Ginza Shopping District. This always bustling area is home to the Kabuki Za Theater with its Kabuki performances, as well as the Shimbashi and Bujo Theater with its traditional Azuma Odori dances and Bunraku performances. Number 1. Mount Fuji. Without a doubt Japan's most recognizable landmark, majestic Mount Fuji is also the country's highest mountain peak. Towering 3,776 meters over an otherwise largely flat landscape to the south and east, this majestic and fabled mountain is tall enough to be seen from Tokyo, more than 100 kilometers away. Mount Fuji has for centuries been celebrated in art and literature and is now considered so important an icon that UNESCO recognized its world cultural significance in 2013. Part of the Fuji Hakone Izu National Park, Mount Fuji is climbed by more than a million people each summer as an act of pilgrimage, which culminates in watching the sunrise from its summit. While some still choose to begin their climb from the base, the majority of climbers now start from above the halfway mark, at the fifth station, resulting in a more manageable six or so hour ascent. Those who do attempt the complete climb are advised to depart in the afternoon, breaking up the climb with an overnight stop at one of the mountain huts designed for this very purpose. An early start the next day gets you to the top for the sunrise. Of course, for many, simply viewing the mountain from the distance, or from the comfort of a speeding train, is enough to say been there, done that. Let us know what you think about the list in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video, please like the video and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you.